Hey YouTube, it's Tyra the Antenna Man. Today I'm going to talk about the difference between a VHF and UHF TV signal. It's important to understand the differences between these signals so that you can know what may affect these frequencies from the transmitter to the antenna connected to your TV set. The first thing I want to mention, and I say this in most of my videos, but for those of you that are just seeing me for the first time, I want to drill in your head. Most TV stations do not broadcast on the channel that they identify as. Take New York, for example. Here are a few of the major market stations, CBS2, NBC4, Fox5, and ABC7. Out of these four major market stations, only one of them broadcasts on the VHF band. That may leave you saying, well, then why do they say they're CBS2 or NBC4 if they don't broadcast on those channels? It's due to the brand that they built up over the years from the analog era. And no TV station is going to change their brand just because they're on a new frequency, especially when they can use a virtual channel to show up as CBS2 or NBC4, even though they are not broadcasting on that channel. Channel. To find out what channels your local TV stations are broadcasting on, go to antennaweb.org, type in your address, and look for the RF channel number. The virtual channel is a channel that the station identifies as, so in my market, NBC28 WBRE. But the RF channel is a channel that they broadcast on. If you see some channels missing on antennaweb.org, don't freak out. Doesn't mean you can't pick them up or they don't exist. Antennaweb.org tends to underestimate the amount of channels you can pick up with an antenna. You are also free to find the channel TV stations broadcasting on by going to the FCC DTV maps or rabbitears.info. I attached links to both in the description of this video. VHF stands for very high frequency, and it's divided up into two bands. Low VHF, which consists of channels 2 through 6, and then high VHF, which consists of channels 2 through 13. UHF stands for ultra high frequency and consists of TV stations that broadcast on channels 14 and above. It currently is channels 14 through 51, but due to the FCC repack, it will soon be channels 14 through 36. Even though these channels are numbered consecutively, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, there is some spacing in between the low VHF, high VHF, and UHF band. Take a look at the spectrum chart. You can see at the very left is AM radio right at around 1 megahertz. And as you move towards the right, you hit low VHF between 54 and 88 megahertz. To the right of low VHF is spectrum reserved for FM radio and other communications, but at around 174 megahertz begins the high VHF band. This goes up to 216 megahertz where there is more spectrum reserved for other uses until 470 megahertz where the UHF band begins. UHF will go up to 608 megahertz or channel 36 after the FCC repack is done. Now that you can see where the TV bands lie on the RF spectrum, I'm going to explain each of these bands. And the first one I'm going to start with is the UHF band, where most TV stations operate on. These are channels 14 and above, you know, TV stations that broadcast on them, not necessarily the TV channel number. So in my market, we have NBC 28 and WYOU 22. They both broadcast in the VHF band. So just take what I say with kind of a grain of salt understanding that if you have an NBC 22, they might not be on channel 22. They might be on the VHF band. UHF TV signals can be picked up by smaller elements on antenna. This is why a lot of TV stations like to broadcast on the UHF band. It's a lot easier to be picked up by the average consumer who purchases this antenna thinking that they need a new HD antenna for HD signals, not understanding that this is only going to pick up UHF TV stations. If you haven't heard me say this enough, you're going to hear me say it again. There's no such thing as an HD antenna. There's no antenna designed for HD frequencies. There are antennas designed for UHF and VHF frequencies, sometimes both. UHF frequencies are typically picked up by an element less than 8 inches long. You can see the UHF elements at the end of this antenna, these little lines, but they also come in the form of figure eights and X's. 
UHF signals are less prone to electrical signals than VHF signals. This may explain why some of you may lose a VHF station or two if you're using an indoor antenna and turning on a microwave or LED lights, while a UHF station may remain solid at the same time. Less prone to electrical interference and smaller antennas needed, sounds like UHF is the perfect band that TV stations should operate on. Well, not necessarily. UHF does have its disadvantages. One of the disadvantages of UHF is that it's very line of sight based, meaning that if you live in a very mountainous area, the signals won't go over the mountains as well as a VHF TV station. I've experienced this firsthand many times when checking reception prior to setting up an antenna in a low-lying area. I'll notice that I have no problem picking up the VHF stations that broadcast in a specific market, but I'll have problems picking up the UHF signals. A lot of times they won't even show up at all just because they don't travel over the mountains and hills as well as the VHF signals do. UHF also requires more power at the transmitter for the same coverage compared to a lower powered VHF station. In one market alone, you can see a VHF station operate at 30 kilowatts ERP and then a UHF station at 500 kilowatts ERP. It's not that the VHF station is not going to reach as far as the UHF station. It's just that higher frequencies require more power. UHF is also worse with multipath interference than VHF. Multipath interference has to do with an antenna seeing two out of sync signals, usually the main signal that it's getting from the tower, and then a secondary signal that bounces off a nearby object. It kind of throws everything off, you get a bunch of pixels, and the signal breaks up. I also witnessed this firsthand at an install last month where I set up an antenna in a heavily wooded area. It was only maybe 30 or 40 miles from the broadcast towers. And when I connected the antenna to his TV set, we noticed that the VHF signals were perfectly fine. Me TV2, 6ABC, um, WHYY channel 12, no problems there. But every station that was on the UHF band would pixelate every 15 or more seconds whenever the trees would blow in the wind due to the multipath. UHF TV signals are also right next to 4G LTE and soon to be 5G LTE bands. This can interfere with the TV stations on the UHF band if you live pretty close to a cell tower, typically within less than a mile. If you notice you have problems on some UHF TV stations and you know you live near a cell tower, look into purchasing an LTE filter. I attached a link in the description of this video to one I recommend. Next, I'm going to explain VHF TV signals, TV stations that broadcast on channels 2 through 13. And again, understand that most TV stations don't broadcast on the channel they identify as. So if you have a Fox 8 or an NBC 7, they may not be broadcasting on those frequencies. VHF TV signals typically require a larger element in order to be picked up, a dipole, kind of like what you see on this antenna. Now, it doesn't mean you can't pick up a VHF signal with a junky flat antenna. If the signal is strong enough, you can pick it up with a bobby pin. I'll demonstrate this in a future video. But for the most reliable reception of a VHF TV signal, you typically want longer elements like what you see on this antenna. VHF TV signals bend over mountains and hills a lot better than UHF TV signals, providing better over-the-air coverage in hilly and mountainous areas. This is why you'll see major market TV stations affiliated with ABC, NBC, and CBS broadcasting on the VHF band in areas with lots of hills and mountains, such as Boise, Idaho, and scranton Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania. VHF TV signals also have the ability to skip over further distances during certain atmospheric conditions. This explains why some of you may be able to pick up a VHF TV station at night, but not during the day. It just means that the atmospheric conditions are much better at night for the VHF frequency to travel to your antenna compared to during the day. In some extreme instances, VHF signals can be picked up from very far away. I'm talking hundreds if not thousands of miles away during something known as tropospheric ducting. I'll have a video on this topic in the future. 
Despite better over-the-air coverage and rugged terrain, VHF TV signals do have their problems. As I mentioned earlier, they have to be picked up with a slightly larger antenna, and in many instances, some TV stations lose viewers that don't have the correct antenna. Viewers that use something like this and say, oh, why can't I get 6ABC? Why can't I get WBRE? They have the wrong antenna, and especially if you have low VHF signals like MeTV2 and 6ABC, you're really in for a treat there. That's why I service the Scranton Wilkesbury, Philadelphia, and Harrisburg areas. VHF is also more prone to electrical and FM interference than UHF TV stations. If you're using an indoor antenna, the chances are when you turn on a microwave or an LED bulb, you may lose some of the VHF TV stations on your TV set. This can easily be resolved by using an antenna in the attic or outdoors, but again, VHF, the band is just naturally noisy. It's subjectable to a lot of interference from electrical, FM, and everything under the sun. In my opinion, UHF TV signals work much better in cities and flat areas so that they can easily be picked up by a high population using smaller antennas, while VHF TV signals would work best in more mountainous areas, areas that have less people and the people are in remote areas and they're willing to put up a big antenna on their roof to pick up the signals. Some of you may be saying, okay then, why don't we just have all UHF for Philadelphia and New York and VHF for Boise, Idaho? Why can't the stations decide what band they brought? broadcast on. TV stations no longer have much of a say on the specific frequency they broadcast on due to the large amount of TV stations in this country and very limited TV spectrum. It's made even worse by the FCC repack that's taken away some of that spectrum, leaving only channels 2 through 36 starting next year for TV stations to operate on. If a TV station wanted to move, the chances are that that frequency is being used by a nearby TV station in one of the four or five markets surrounding the middle of that TV station's transmitter, or there might be a repeater operate on that frequency, and thus they can't move. ATSC 3.0 is going to be launched over the next few years, and I'll have plenty of videos on this topic, and a lot of promises are made about improvements to over-the-air TV with this new standard. Hopefully this video gives you a better understanding on the differences between UHF and VHF TV signals. Personally, I think it's just kind of cool to understand how they work. You know, VHF TV signals do better bending over mountains, UHF TV signals are less prone to electrical interference, and understanding these differences can help improve your reception if you have problems on a specific channel. See what frequency it's on, see if you're near electrical wires, if you're near a big radio station. You'd also check out my video, 10 Ways on How to Improve your reception, I include a link in the description of this video. Thanks again for watching my YouTube channel and be sure to stay tuned to it for more antenna and cord cutting related information. Check out my website at antennamanpa.com for some personally recommended antennas and then also custom antenna recommendations for your very specific area. Antennas really are not a one size fits all model and investing in a custom antenna recommendation from me can really save you money and time over the long term. Thanks again for watching and have an awesome day.